how to paint some rosebuds. So have fun with this. We're going to start with the roses. I have these two and um, I, I might just uh, paint on them together. The colors that I am going to, just so Before if you, you paint. Start, what are your brush numbers? Okay, so my brush numbers are, this is a number 12. Mm -hmm. This is a number 14. Now, every uh, brush manufacturer is gonna have a little bit of a different idea of what a number 10 or 12 or whatever. And this is a different brand, as you can see, and that is number 10, and it's exactly pretty much the same size as number 12. See that? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then this one is um, a dagger brush. It's a half inch dagger. I like that a lot. I use that quite a bit. For flowers, I usually use round brushes, however. Um, the main thing for me is that a brush will come to a nice tip, nice point when it's wet. And I also like it to have what we call a little bit of a snap. Can you see like, how they spring back? Yeah. Um, these are synthetic brushes. Uh, I know that earlier, you know, <coughs> painters kind of felt that, you know, you couldn't paint with synthetic brushes. They were not very good. You should have like the expensive Kalinsky brushes and they cost like hundreds of dollars. And that is not the case anymore. Now this one, I'm just taking this one out. This is an inexpensive Chinese brush. It's, I think it's probably goat hair. Can oh, you see? Yeah. Can you see the difference? No, I never yes. This is what I mean when I say I want a snap. So you want to try that out, you know, if you can. Yeah. Has a nice snap, but not too stiff. So this one is nice. It has a little bit of a snap, whereas this has no snap whatsoever. Uh, and that is what you will find with natural hairs. I hope you don't. I um, so, you know, every brush has, you know, its, its process and its pros and its cons. I find that this type of a brush, it's, a, you know, not very expensive. This is a, a Mimic Squirrel brushes. You can get the, a whole set where you get mm -hmm. a bunch of the brushes, a bunch of, I think there's eight brushes in the set and I think it's number 12 is in there number. This number 30, which I love. Look at this brush here. And normally, and I certainly have some, normally if you buy this size of a round brush in a natural hair, we're talking hundreds mm -hmm. of dollars, hundreds. And look at this, how nice this comes to a point. So that means it'll hold a lot of water, but I can still get very fine lines with it and I don't have to reload it all the time. That's why I'm not a fan of painting with small little brushes because mm -hmm. you know, you run out of pigment mm -hmm. and water in like no time and then you have to go back and then when you come back here, then you know, uh, you get a bloom or whatever. That's it. Anyway, enough talk. Let's get to painting for heaven's sake. All right, so let me s tell you what I'm going to use. That's yeah, now I took number 14. Maybe I'll go back to my, this one here, 12. Doesn't really, really matter. Doesn't matter it what. doesn't matter what, I mean, um, it, I can tell you a couple of things that really do not matter very much. It does not matter very much what size brush I'm using. Okay. It does not matter very much what color I'm using. What matters is how I'm using the brush okay. and how I'm, using, how I'm applying it on the, on the paper. That's really what's important. Colors and and uh, brush sizes are really a lot less important. But I know, you know, that students always like to know what exactly it is. Um, so I'm just wetting those colors that I'm thinking about using again. So I'll get my, so when I take out puddles, I tend to not use too big of a brush, you know, because it takes a lot of pigment and if I, you know, I don't need that much for little flowers like that. So I think I'll take some of my quinacridone red. That's this red here. And so I go in, you know, after I've sprayed some water on my, my uh, red, I go in and I mush it around. What am I doing? I am making sure that all my pigments have dissolved in the water. Mm -hmm. And I'm also kind of getting a feel for how much pigment to water I have, the ratio. And I'm about good with this. And then I do like this. 
And and I say, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, and I say, okay, you're the dirty water. And then we go down and rinse out. Oh, and then, you know, and then I go on my paper towel here, and I always have a terry cloth underneath. It kind of saves a little bit on my on my paper towels. And you can, it's quite obvious, I didn't get all the red out, did I? Nope, back in the bath. And then I go again, we're better. And now I think it's just a residual. And then I try one more time. I think I'm pretty okay. All right, and then uh, let's go in and then just do some transparent yellow so I can show you. See how brilliant it is? We would never have thought, right? That it would be that pretty. Yeah, and I'm gonna make myself two puddles of the uh, yellow because I'm gonna use one puddle to mix with the red and I'm gonna use another one to mix with the blue for the greens. So then, you know, I, I might pollute my yellow a little bit and then I'll get dirty colors and I don't want that. So a little bit more there. And then sometimes I'll even take my spray bottle and I just go close to my hairs and then I'll put a little water on. That way I get the last pigment out. There we go. And then any me and my mo back in the bath. And then you can see color theory right here in front of your eyes. Mm -hmm. You have now learned that yellow and red, they make what? Orange, Orange. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, did I, I, I never finished my thought here. I put my colors in the order of the color wheel. So I start out with my red, then it's pink, then it's uh, more pink, and this is kind of a purpley red. Then I go to my French ultramarine blue, which is kind of a little bit on the purpley side. Then I go to cobalt blue, which could be considered my most true blue. And then I go to my Antwerp blue, which is more on a greenish side blue. And then I go to my peacock blue, which is really um, a, uh, a turquoise blue. And then I go to indigo, which also leans towards the green side a little bit. So, because I'm moving towards yellow, right? So you can see there, so I try to do it like that. And then I have my transparent yellow. Then I have my quinacridone gold, which is more of a warmer, much warmer yellow, leaning towards orange almost. And then I have my uh, earth tone, which is my um, burnt sienna, which is a very warm, I mean, definitely leaning towards the red. So, and then I'm back to red. So that's how I like to have my palette. So if I started, if I, if I started out with just having three colors, I would make sure I make space in between. I wouldn't put them red, blue, and yellow mm -hmm. because then, you know, I'm kind of stuck, right? Mm -hmm. So I would do my red, then I'd give it some spaces, do my blue, and then give it some space and do my yellow so I can fill out my palette as I decide to add on colors. Yeah. That way I don't have to, with my palette knife going, because, you know, I know all this because I've tried it. Mm -hmm. Go in and get all the pigment out and move down. It's a big, it's half an hour later. Mm -hmm. So that's no fun. All right, so we need one more color. So today, um, I think I'm gonna do my demo with just using my three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. So right, need a blue. And um, I could do my French ultramarine blue, or I could do my Antwerp blue. What would you prefer? French ultramarine. French ultramarine, okay. That's what most people yeah, have. People yeah. Have okay, good. <laughs> and don't worry about if you don't have exactly the same red or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's the, it's the method that matters, not the color. So here's my French ultramarine blue. Up here. Get a little bit more. There we go. And let's see what happens now. So here we have two primary colors in. We mix them together, red and yellow, right? Now we have the third one, blue. Mm -hmm. What happens? Browns. Brown. Brown. <laughs> and can you remember that I told you a little while ago that you can make your own burnt shenna? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did I make yeah. here? Yeah. Burnt yeah. shenna by mixing all three primaries together. Yeah. The more, you, more colors you mix together, the more they dull each other down. You can never ever mix a color to make it brighter. You can only mix it to make it duller. 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 And of course you can make it darker and you can also make it lighter by putting more in, in more water, but you cannot mix a, a color brighter. So think about that. When people in, in watercolor, people so often say, oh, it turned muddy. Yeah, it turned muddy because you put too many colors together. Mm -hmm. 
and that's why I'm, I'm also a big fan of kind of sticking to the primary colors. Of course, I have a variety of them, but I don't, like you won't, there's no green on my palette. Heck, I know how to mix a green. It's yellow and blue. And they get much more interesting when I do it myself. And when I find when students have green on their palette, that's the green they use. It doesn't matter if it's the right green, that's the green they use. So, and then later on, you find a lot of people, they say, oh, I find um, green so difficult. Well, that's because they've always squeezed them out of the tube. They don't know how to make it. So my students, they are forced to make their own poor things. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's just uh, start with these flowers here. So I'm going to go into my clean water and I'm going to put some clean water on this particular petal here, just this little one. And I don't go all the way out to the pencil lines. I leave myself a little distance, little allowance, yeah. So can you see I have water in here? the petal, but not all the way out to this yeah. edges. Okay, it's a little bit more water maybe that I needed, but by the time I am ready to put some color in. So let's put some red in there, right? Yeah. Let's put some red in, dab, dab. And then I start down here. The reason I'm starting down here is because this is the darkest part of this petal. So I'm letting it and can you see how it flows up into where the water is? Mm -hmm. And it stops where it hits dry. So that's the control you have. Wherever you put water, your pigment's gonna go, whether you want it to or not. And wherever it's dry, it's gonna stop. So you can control where your pigment goes by where you put your water. So keep that in mind. And uh, before things dry on me, I better get going here. And so I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna follow along this line here. So you're actually painting on dry that you left. Yeah, I'm painting in over the dry, the dry also, thing. yes, because you know I do want the color to go all the way out there, but I just want a little flow here. And where it flows, you know, it, it gets diluted by more water, so it's gonna be lighter. And I want the top light. light. And see now, I'm not gonna rinse out my brush, but I'm gonna just Barely, barely, barely get my little tip into the yellow, just a little dip. And I'm gonna put that on now, and of course I wanna get a little color variation. And I'm putting that on, and letting the colors mix and mingle right here on my paper. And now I'm gonna rinse out my brush, dab it on my towel here, get some water, clean water on, dab it so it's just damp, not dripping wet. This is very important. This is the most important part here. And then I'm gonna go in from the top of this petal and just kind of gently go down and touch into here. So I get very, very light tip. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And that way I already have shape and interest in just that little petal. I don't have to go in and do a whole lot of stuff to it later. I try to paint it so that, now I can see I'm a little, I need to leave that. I, I try to get as much in as I can in the first go around, and I try to let the colors mix directly on the paper. So I didn't go and mix myself an orange or stuff like that. I let them mix on the paper. I think it's much natural. more interesting. Mm. And natural, yeah, exactly. And uh, now before it dries on me, I think I'm gonna go in and take a little bit of that blue, French ultramarine blue on the tip, and I'm gonna go in here Take a little bit of the red, maybe a little bit more of the red. And so I get a very dark one, purpley red here. And I'm just gonna, before it's dry, just gonna tap it in down here, just to give it a little shadow feeling. Just see how I'm just tapping in? Meaning I'm just kind of putting the tip in and letting it deposit a little bit of paint. There, I'm gonna leave it now. Mm -hmm. Can you see how I gave it shape? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you have it. That was that. And if you want to see it one more time, I'll do the exact same thing here. Now I'm just going to do it fast. Is that for all the petals? That's, I'm going to do it like that for all the petals. There's that petal and that petal. So there's really only two petals here that, yeah. that are going to be red. We can give this one a little bit of red, but that's going to be a special story because that's a very tight. It's just beginning to break out of the sepals. I studied 
sepals they're called. <laughs> How about that? Okay, so here I'm just gonna do this one more time on this rose. So you can see it doesn't matter the shape of the rose, it doesn't matter what colors you have. If you wanted to rather have a pink, uh, a pink uh, flower, you can do that with some pink. And uh, if you wanted more orange, you could put more orange in or more yellow in or whatever you want to do. I'm going to do the same thing here. Put it in. I kind of stay at the bottom of the petal because I know it's darkest down here. Of course, the light doesn't really get down to the bottom there and then it gets lighter as it goes up towards the light. And then Get a little bit of yellow in, of course, I'm introducing that a little bit earlier here. Get a little variance in it. There's that. Now I'm going to rinse out my brush, dab it, rinse it out, dab it, clean water, dab it. See, these were the, this is the important part, not what color I'm using. This is the important part, it's all that. Uh, and, and then I'm going in from this side where there's no pigment, and I'm kind of, can you see how I'm dragging it up? Yeah. Just, I'm gently coaching it up the petal. Put a little bit more up here. And then I like to use gravity. Mm -hmm. You know, usually it doesn't do me any favors, but in watercolor <laughs> it does. <laughs> can you see that? Mm -hmm. And you can make it just kind of run. Yeah. Maybe I feel like a little bit more yellow right there. And as long as it's wet, you can dab in. Once it starts drying and your paper starts getting to be matte, don't touch it. That's it. Because when you go in, when it's lost the shine and it's beginning to dry, all you can do is make a small boo-boo into a large, huge boo-boo. <laughs> if you let it dry, sometimes what you think is a problem doesn't even you know, matter. And if it is a problem, you can fix it later. But you, the only place you can, only time you cannot fix anything is right when things are drying. So let's see if it turns out a little bit different. And then another thing you can see here already, can you see it? watercolor dries lighter than what it looks right when you put it on. Right. So that's just something to keep in mind. But there you have it. So let's uh, get our petals painted. So I have to decide, is this one? So it's like the petals are like this, right? right. Mm -hmm. So I have to decide, are they like this or are they like this? Uh -huh. And if they're like this, this side has to be darker. The overlapping is lighter. Light brings forward, dark pushes back. So that's how I, just, I mean, that's how I tell the viewer what's what. And so I will say that this one is lying on top. Okay. okay. I'm, that's what I've decided. So first I'm gonna do exactly like I did before. I'm gonna put a little bit of water in mm -hmm. and I put a little bit on this side. I'm not putting so much in, just a little bit. And now you don't have a petal that's kind of split up in two, right? Because this green sepal is in front of it. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of color on. I'm using my quinacridone red, and I'm starting down here, the bottom, and up along here. I wanna put a little bit of the yellow in just because I feel like it, and it's my flower, so I can do what I want. And I said this one is gonna be underneath, so it has to be darker okay. than the other one. So put a little bit in there and here. So I want more red. And I'm going all the way up along here. And then I'm gonna put a little, little tiny bit of water on my, and see I went on my towel there. Yeah. Wanna, before it dries on me, I better finish on this side and catch it here. And then I want to put a little tiny bit of yellow in on this side too. Obviously, since it's the same petal, it has to be the same color kind of, right? right. And so like there. I'm going to rinse it out completely, dab my brush a whole bunch of times. So it's just damp. It's a very small area here, right? So just and now I'm going to show you another technique while it's still damp I can go in and I can lift out with a thirsty brush a little bit of that pigment there 
to make it a little lighter here. And I'm gonna go back in and see how thick my paint is now. It's not so watery, right? Yeah. Because now I want, if I want darker, I need thicker paint. That means more pigment. Less water. And less water. And it's also a very small area, so. So let's go in and darken here a little bit. And I wanna darken again on this side also and down here. Could even put a little bit of that blue in down here just to darken it. Now I'm gonna rinse my brush, dab, dab, dab. Rinse it again, dab, dab. And here, and then before this dries on me, hopefully, I go in with a damp tip and I just kinda tickle that a little bit just so I don't have a hard line. I don't really want it to be, look outlined there. Can you see that? Yeah. And can you see how, because I put dark underneath there, it's, it looks like this one's in front, right? Mm -hmm. And I can wait until it's completely dry, and then I could even go in, and I'll show you that. Darker. And I can make this darker, yes, and I could also lift, try and scrub out a little bit and make the light lighter. I could do both to make the contrast bigger. When it's, when it's dry. When it's dry. You can't do it now because now it's drying and that's the most critical Crucial. time where, you know, you don't it's touch dry. anything. You just got to stay out. No matter what you think is a, a huge problem. Um, so I can't touch these sepals up here. I can touch, yeah, I can touch this one. So here, now we're going into the green part. And actually, I think I can paint this whole thing up here, up here, up here, up here. Green. That's for the green. And I'm gonna put water in everywhere. So up here, down there, up this little bud, which is gonna be mainly green, but I wanna show you something cool. I hope it's, I hope I'm gonna show you something mm -hmm. cool, we'll see. Um, can you see how I have the water in? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And can you see how I don't go all the way out to the lines? Yeah. Because the watercolor always creeps a little bit. So that's why I leave myself a little room for error. And now I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna put a little bit of yellow in first. I'm not gonna worry about those petals or those leaves right now. And I'm not gonna worry about that stem right now. I have plenty going on and I want to paint underneath and above that and I'm just going to go like that and then I'm going to go up here so I have a pretty big area so I cannot be uh, dilly-dallying too much because I don't want it to dry on me prematurely and then I can go up this one here and so now I painted all that with an underpainting of the yellow. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna rinse out my brush. I still have yellow on it and I'm gonna stick the tip into my French ultramarine blue, load it up with that. And then um, I have my light source here. So I'm gonna put that French ultramarine that has a little yellow on it too, on top of the yellow here. I better be quick. Get a little bit more. It can be dark underneath there. And a little dark here, a little dark there, and here. And I better get some in here. And I'm trying to keep it so that it's still wet. I don't want it to be dry yet because then it's going to create lines where I don't want it. So let's get a little bit more. Now I'm going to mix a green out here by mixing the French ultramarine blue and the yellow and I'm going to run in a little bit more on the shadow side of this and it's going to be darker underneath this leaf because that leaf is casting a shadow. It's going to be darker on this side and I'm going to put a little bit up here and then I'm gonna put some up here. Can you see how it kind of seeps Contrast. in and it kind of blends by itself more or less? Yeah. And then I wanna put some up here and I wanna put a little dark here. 
there, 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 there. So I'm just seeing and reacting to what happens. And now I have, see, that's when I felt my, plus now I don't, it's beginning to dry, so I gotta get a move on. And I'm just kind of blending it a little bit. Can you see that? And here, and we do want it to look green here, not yellow. So here we are, and then here, same here. Okay. There we have that. And because I do it this way and let the colors kind of mix and mingle on the page a little bit, it makes it more interesting, I find, more natural. And now I'm mixing myself a little bit of a darker green. Dab, dab. Just again, just using those two colors and it's still damp. So now I can still, can you see how it, it kind of bleeds out a little bit when I touch it? So I'm trying to get all this done while I still have it at this damp, damp stage. And I'm just trying to give it a little shape. And underneath here. Can you see how by putting that light, uh, that dark on, it kind of makes, makes this stand out a little bit, like there's a separation between. There, a little bit here and a little bit here. And then I want to put some of that dark on there. Rinse it out, dab, dab. Grab it with a damp and just gently pull it out. Let me take a look here. Let's see, Let's fix it a little bit there. And before it dries completely on me, let me just go in here and get this one a little bit more pronounced. And see, I put a little bit of darkness on there. I, with a damp brush, I just connect it like that. And here I want it to be maybe a little bit of a sunnier green, so that means more yellow. There. And now, comes the exciting part. See if I can get away with it. No guarantees, but we'll see. So now I take a little bit of the red. And I want to say that this butt is kind of button out. And I put a little bit of the yellow in there. And I like to have that a little bit of a soft edge to not be so defined. Let that kind of bleed like that and just dab in a little bit of color. Yeah, I kind of like that. And then see how I felt it again. And then here again, I don't want it too defined, just like that. Just saying that that thing's coming out. Mm. And put a little bit, see here, get it kind of like dark. Look could, yeah, I mean, this is, do it, it's okay. yeah, it's, this is, so I'm just putting a little bit of darkness in just to say, you know, there's all sorts of wrinkles in these when they're coming out. Mm. So I just want to put a little bit of Green. shadow color on. But there we have it, pretty well. I could soften this a little bit. See, that's with a damp brush. And actually what I like to do sometimes is I take a little bit of that yellow orangey and I, I'm going to put in a few places just so that it's not so green. Give those stems a little character. Just a little bit. Mm. I think that just kind of livens it up a little. Right. That's it's just, you know, my creative so license that I'm using here. <laughs> I'm not so concerned about, you know, exactly how it is, just interpreting. And this has to dry. I can put a leaf, this leaf I can paint. And here I'm gonna to try your di to show you a different method because all this we I've done so far for you has been wet into wet, right? Mm -hmm. So now I'm gonna do wet on dry because here I really want this back uh, sepal to be really dark. So I'm doing it on dry paper, but I'm making sure that I have enough paint on my brush 
that it's not going to dry on me before I'm ready, hopefully. That's what I'm striving for. So I'm mixing myself another little bit more green here. And see, now I can kind of dab it in here and I want to make it really dark right here behind to make that pop out. Mm. And I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna take a little bit more yellow on now. Because now the sepal here is also going up towards the light, right? So it'll be highlighted here on the tip. So I have more yellow in my brush now. That'd be nice. And fix the shape a little bit, a little darker on that side sets away from the light there see how well, you can just dab it in when it's and it spreads on its own and now I have that color there I really really think I should have that color down here too so now it's dry enough I can go in and I can kind of reinforce right here clean it out and then just kind of drag it so that it and, and one other place where it would be nice, it's ultra dry. So if I, first of all, I should do a little bit darker right here. And then dark down here, I should do it really dark. Just to bring that out there, especially on this side and a little bit on there. And then I rinse my brush out before it dries on me here don't want a line like that. I just wanted a little bit of a more shadow. There we go. Clean it out. Yeah, and then here, same thing. Take that there. See how that gives it more shape? Yeah. And now we kind of have some color harmony going on. And now that I'm at it, dab, 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 dab. I really want it to be much darker underneath, right underneath that leaf and a little bit on this side. And then here, see if I put that darkness in there and pull it out like that. Can you see how now I told you that that is a zebra going over and then this is coming out there and here, just again, soften a little bit, soften a little bit. There. So when you say dark, you're really just doing green. Yeah, yeah. Dark. It's a dark green. And the light because source is more blue than yellow. Yeah. There. So you can see that's why it's, that's dark. why that's lighter. That's why it's lighter there. That's why I darkened a little bit on this side. I can darken a little bit more actually. And you can push it as much or as little as you want. Yeah, that's good enough. And now we can definitely see this one's on top, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it's lighter. Mm -hmm. nice. There you go. I think mm -hmm. your heads are probably full. <clears throat> so here I am just um, painting in uh, some more of uh, the sepals and uh, um, finishing up uh, some of the roses so that uh, I'm ready for my next demo.
Okay, so I saved one little leaf for you. So you can see how I did them. I did these two. And these two, you can see I left them very kind of loose. You can see there's two because I made one a little bit lighter than the other, but that's it. And they're way down here on the edge. It's not a place where you should spend a lot of time and put a lot of detail in because you don't really want your people to look down here and fall out of your pic picture. You want them to look out up here. So we also have to think about, this is not painting technique so much as it's like composition and design and creating an interesting painting. Don't have everything equally interesting, meaning equally detailed. You want to you wanna pick a star. And then they're supporting actors. You, they can't all be the star because it's too confusing and it doesn't make for good painting. Uh, even in a, in a little exercise like this, we can think about those things. So that's why I'm fine with them being just like that. And actually they look good that way. Thank you. And then, so I'm gonna do this one here. And I already remember I put some extra darks underneath mm -hmm. and this one will have to be lighter because I wanna bring it forward. So I'm going to do the same old thing, and I'm going to try not to mess around with a little tiny brush. I'm not a, fa a big fan of painting with little tiny brushes most of the time because too many brush strokes. They dry out right away. You run out of pigment all the way. Then you have to go back, and then you've got the wrong level of pigment and water on it. You get all sorts of problems. Paint with a big old brush. You think it's harder. It's actually easier. And especially it comes to a nice tip so I can get into the little nooks and crannies. So... Let's just paint the little stem here. I'm going to make the stem a little bit darker because it's coming from the other side, I have decided. And then just, I'm just going to dab in a little bit here. So you can see I have kind of a greenish color on. So here I started like that and I have water on. And then I'm going to go in and get a little bit more of the yellow because I want it a little lighter and brighter on the upside here because of the light source. It's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be, I want it lighter than what's underneath. Of course, I can always darken what's underneath, but, and then just fill it out. Now these leaves that I've painted and the stems and everything, they're actually probably a little bit lighter than roses are traditionally, but I don't care. Again, it's my rose. It's my world right here on this piece of paper, so I can do whatever I want. That's my philosophy. And so here I have a little dip in the petal here, so I think that might be because... And then the tip there would be a little darker, right, because it's away from the light. So I can put a little bit more blue in there. And then if I think, oh, that's a little too blue, I just put some yellow on top of it. And there you have it. And I like my edge here to be a little ragged because actually these rose uh, uh, leaves, they have a little serrated, I think it's called, with a fancy dancy word. Man, I'm building up my English vocabulary like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> and then I'm going to just lift out a little bit there because I want it lighter over that stem. It looks better. That's all I care about, really, is how does it look? Does it look better? Yeah, it looks better. Then I might as well, on this one, I could show you a little trick. I didn't use it on any of the others, but I have a tool which is a cut up like credit card or membership card or whatever. And I use, can you see, it was still very, very wet. And can you see with its edge, I scraped out that rib that goes vein. Yeah, and I can do a couple more since... And so I did it while it was very, very wet. So what happens is I'm actually creating a groove in the paper and the pigment, since it's so wet still, it's still loose and loose and flowy and it flows in and falls right into the ditch, but it can't come out again. And so I create a darker line and it's so much easier doing it like this. And see those fine lines I can get with using the edge of my, this little point. Mm -hmm. I usually cut them on an angle to get a nice point. And then I have these rounded corners and I have the sides and I can do all sorts of things with them. Um, that's a very important tool for me. Uh, so that works out really well. And I'm gonna call this rose done. Can I ask a question? Yes, you can I'm ask. On a bigger leaf, yeah. can you wet it now and have it grow? Okay. No, so. you cannot do this trick once it's been dried. So now we have this rose left and I left all the green parts. And you've already seen me paint them once. And I think most of you have already tried to paint 
a couple of stems and leaves and sepals. Um, so I'm not going to bother with the sepals because you've seen me do that. And you've seen me do another leaf. So I think we're kind of good on that. But let me do the stem again. Because here I created those little thorns. So I am going to go back to my usual procedure, which mm -hmm. is put a little water in. Because I want flow. And I don't go all the way out to the edges. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Good. And I am taping, so that's good. All right. <laughs> so it's going to be really dark underneath here because the whole uh, rose is casting a shadow. You know, this light's coming from above there, and then this is kind of sticking out on this stem. So this will definitely be very dark. And then this side will be darker than that side because the light's coming from here. So it'll hit a little bit on that side of the stem. So that's the premise. So I'm going into my French ultramarine blue and I have a little tiny bit of yellow in it. And I'm going to start from the dark side here. And I don't care if it's very blue. I can always make it more green by putting more yellow on. So here's that. And see, I'm painting with my number 12 brush. So I have lots of pigment and water on my thing and so I'm going to go down here go down here and then just out and now I'm just going to put a little bit of yellow on top I didn't rinse out my brush and I'm just dabbing that yellow in here and that is going to turn the blue green I know that because that's what it does and go up on those little and then I'm going to take more yellow and I'm, I, as you might already have noticed, I flip my paintings around all the time so that I can get as easy access as possible to the area I want to paint without having my big old hand in the, on top of something wet. So, you know, that's, I think that's makes it so much easier. So now I have that yellow on and I'm just going to drag it up. Maybe put a little bit more on here, drag it up, and because everything is still uh, wet, it mixes nicely. And then I'm just going in and doing a little bit more of this stuff here. And I like to put a little bit darker on the underside of these thorns. There. See how nice it is when you have a little color variance. It just see how it just makes it round right away. And now it's still damp, so. I can dab in more pigment so I really make that dark. So let me rinse out my brush and then let me get a little bit of red on my brush. And I'm going to dab a little bit of that red on these thorns here. Of course, they have a little bit of that reddish color like that. Oh, right? Amazing. So that's kind of nice. And then let me show you my little credit card trick here. So I'm going to Let's see, find a good angle. I'm going to use my rounded corner. And while it's still damp, I'm going to kind of scrape out. And that gives like a little highlight kind of a thing to the thorns here. And I think that looks really good. Now, if you don't like that, you certainly don't have to do it. Right. And I can even do it where I didn't plant a thorn. See there? Yeah. Thorn. Wow. It's too dry. If it's too dry, it won't scrape. And I could put in just a little bit of red on that one. This is just going overboard, but that's okay. I can go overboard. I can go overboard. It's my painting. That's what I always say. There. So can you see how you get those cute yeah. little thorns there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so was, was They're not so cute when they prick you, but... I yeah. have a question. So yes. On this one, didn't you wet it and then do yellow everywhere? Yes, I did, and now I did it opposite. How come? Because. Just because. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. To show you that you could do it either way. Okay. She Good. doesn't want us to copy her. Okay. That's why. No. <laughs> but you can do it either way. Okay. And okay. here I started with blue. Can you see? Yeah. I got it a little bit darker. Yeah. Because I, I went a little darker with the blue, and then I went the yellow. But either way, you can do it either way. 
And of course, you could also mix yourself a green and then paint it green. But what I find is it becomes more monotonous. It becomes all the same tone. That's why I love to do it this way because little stuff yes. happens and I need that excitement. I need to, you know, I need to not know exactly what's going to happen. Oh, I've got excitement. Don't worry. I never know what's happening here. And so these are also greens. I'm going to paint those in now. And that's exactly the same that I showed you already. So I want to give you more painting time. So go do your thing. Oh, thank you so much for uh, watching my video. Um, I'm just finishing up these uh, two rose buds. Um, and I've sped up uh, the video so it doesn't take too long. But you can still see what I'm doing. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the button below and um, I wish you happy painting and see you in another video very soon.